Welcome, cadets. This is Dr. Gordon Cook, and we're here to talk about task organization today. Right, building your task org is about three critical things. All right, you got to think, number one, assessing your available resources. Who's on your team? What assets do you have available for the mission? Number two, deciding how to organize and structure those resources so you can make your mission execution manageable. So for span of control reasons, three to five subordinate pieces is usually ideal. And you want each team to have the right resources and the right size to do the job that you're asked them to do. And then the third thing is communicating that organization to your team in a way that they can understand. The task org helps you tell them who reports to who and what resources they each have on their team. Now, here's an example of a company task org diagrammed as a wire diagram. So let's walk through how to build one of these because that's what you need to know how to do. First, you put your unit at the top. In this case, I am Alpha Company, second of the 5 Deuce Infantry. Strike Force! All right, I did my CTLT with Delta Company back in the 90s. All right, next, we put in your normal organic or assigned subordinate units. In this case, we have three platoons, first, second, and third. You want to kind of space them out equally so you have room to work. Next, under each subordinate unit, draw in your key weapon systems. You don't want to put every weapon. We know that every soldier has some kind of weapon and that most squads have typical small arms. Just your key weapons that give you greater capabilities. Rocket launchers, heavy machine guns, things like that. In this case, all my platoons have the same mix of key weapons but that may not always be the case. Perhaps there's a limited number of AT4s and only one unit will get them. Or perhaps I wanna mass them with a support by fire element. It's up to you. You also have to include your attached units. They're not a normal part of your unit, so your assigned soldiers need to know what other elements are coming along for the mission, and everyone needs to know who reports to whom for the mission. So in this case, we have a mortar section who'll be part of first platoon, and we have an engineer squad from the 7th Engineer Battalion working for us, and they're attached to 3rd Platoon. The 3rd Platoon leader will decide how to use them internally, or maybe they'll report directly to the PL. All right, your attachments don't have to go under one of your subordinate units. It all depends on the size of the attachment and how you're going to use them. So I could have the engineer attachment report directly to me as the commander, which would make sense if I was given a whole engineer platoon, for example. So here's, here's that, an engineer platoon that reports directly to the company commander, even though they're attached. The last thing we need to do is put in the tasks and purpose for each subordinate element. That way, our soldiers will know right at the start of the op order what their task and purpose is as they listen to the rest of the order. It can be helpful to give a task and purpose to your attached elements also, so everyone understands why they're there and how they're being used. And you can also use the icons to show which unit's the decisive operation and who is your supporting operations. So to recap, you need to have your unit at the top, your subordinate units, your key weapon systems, any attachments, and your tasks and purposes. All right, here's another example. Just want to walk you through it to make sure you understand how this works. In this case, we are up there at the top. First platoon from Bravo Company, an infantry platoon. All right, now task organized for this mission, we've got five squad size elements working for us. All right, we've got our own first squad. All right, we've got our own second squad and our own third squad. And I see that little minus symbol there on second squad. Those minus symbols mean we lost the next size down. So that squad is losing a fire team. Now, if we look under attachments here, just notice that first squad has a fire team attached to it. It's coming out of second squad, first platoon, Bravo company, our own. So second squad leader is giving one of his fire teams up to first squad leader to make that element larger. All right, we've also got an external attachment here, okay? Because second squad leader though, he is picking up a section, all right, Bravo section, coming out of 3rd Platoon Hotel Troop, and that's a mechanized scout unit, right? So he's probably got two Bradleys that he's picking up that can uh, work for his mission. And then all the way over there, uh, at the platoon level, we've got, we're keeping control of an engineer squad, a mechanized engineer squad 
that's working for us. Third squad from first platoon of Bravo company, whatever engineer unit we work with. All right. And then the tasks and purposes are all there. This is obviously some kind of breach mission, all right? We got SOSERA going on. All right, now besides doing wire diagrams, we can also give written task organizations. This is actually pretty common on, you know, written orders that get published. Uh, so here's one example, a real common way to do it is with these kind of box uh, charts. So uh, we're some kind of company team. You can see here that there's a, a box and underneath us, we've got uh, a head, the troop headquarters is kind of a platoon size element. We've got first platoon, uh, Delta troop, that's us, we're Delta troop. And then there's second platoon coming from Bravo troop, they're attached, so we say that they're attached. We've got our own third platoon Delta troop. And then we've got a uh, maintenance contact team, MCT, they're attached to us. And we've got mortars in direct support. So they're in DS to us, uh, not attached, but we're gonna show them there too. And then underneath each box, we can put in uh, this is kind of like listening to key weapon systems. Those are probably bumper numbers representing each vehicle they got. Um, and then you can see like on the maintenance contact team, they have one 88, it's probably an M88 record, and one MCT, one contact team of soldiers. All right, and you've got one mortar section there. So we know what our task organization is, how we're divided up into those six elements, and what's inside of each of those six. Now besides the boxes, some of those people just use words. You can lay them out in a uh, treed structure. So the first MP platoon, underneath that, there's a headquarters element. First squad is the decisive operation. Second squad is supporting and third squad is supporting. All right. Here's another written one where they wrote it out in line. So are saying that the task org is Alpha Battery, Bravo Battery, Headquarters and Headquarters Battery. And then they've got uh, the, and it's probably an attachment because you're given a number, the 580th FSC and the battalion staff is task organized underneath them. Now you can also sometimes see, here's a last example. Uh, they've literally just said no change, all right? Maybe this is a, uh, maybe this is a Frago or um, they don't have any attachments or detachments to talk about just their normal, what, what they've been working with is, as a no change is listed out there. So these are just ways. Now all of these examples, I've, I've taken these out of real op orders that were written by officers and issued for various operations. Uh, some of them were training, some of them were operational in theater. Um, but uh, I could show you these task org pieces that were unclassified. Um, all right, that concludes this video. So I hope you have an understanding of some different ways to handle task organization, how to communicate it, and how to build that wire diagram. Uh, it's really one of the best ways to show what your task organization is and help you know what you have in your unit. <clears throat>